Hi everybody, welcome to Diamond Local Chain, another episode here. Um, I want to tell you we're gonna be making a New York style cheesecake this time. And it's gonna be with Ferrero Rocher chocolate candy. We're going to use Frangelico liqueur. Half a cup of espresso and a half cup of the, when I say cup, I apologize, I mean the, the demi tasse cup of Frangelico. We're also gonna decorate this really nice. So I wanna get started with a few things here because I have a lot on the table and a lot to get done. I'm gonna pause the video here and there. So I am going to put the graham crackers I already put in here. I'm using graham crackers, crackers this time because I was just too busy to um, crush cookies and will be sculpty. I didn't really have anything on hand. So I put in that mixture of the graham cracker, I put some hazelnuts, ground hazelnuts. Okay, because hazelnuts is something that's in the frangelica, um, frangelical liqueur. And the Ferrero Rocher has also has frange um, hazelnut in it. So I am going to just heat this up a little bit more here, this butter. I apologize, I had it ready, but I got a phone call and I had to take that. So I'm just gonna let that run for a little bit. I also am gonna use some raspberry and I'm gonna create a chocolate disc that goes on top of the chocolate, on top of the, the cheesecake. And the cheesecake is gonna be marbled. So it's gonna be marbled with chocolate incorporated into the vanilla cheesecake. Really exciting. Um, just make sure this is, this goes by real quick, it's already melted. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, I'm gonna pour the butter into the ground cracker and hazelnut ground up in, in here. We're gonna mix this. I'm also gonna show you a neat trick on how to Put a liner on the bottom of your spray form pan because I am going to put a little bit of parchment paper. So you just want to really incorporate the graham cracker with the butter. It takes a few moments. Once we get this set, we'll put it into the spring form pan and pop them into the refrigerator. Let them get nice and cold while we're making everything else. A lot of my videos you can make ahead. Um, there's steps that you can make ahead of time so that you don't feel like you're overwhelmed making one recipe. And I hope you took the time to invite some of your friends to the page, share the videos. As I always tell you guys, my goal is to continue the Italian traditions keep them going for our children, their children's children. And Facebook is a great place to keep a history of records, I feel. And of course, you could always look at the videos, step-by-step -step video, as I'm doing right now. There's plenty of them, how to make your own ricotta. Um, I also want to tell you guys, when you're making Italian buttercream, please don't throw out the egg yolks that you don't wind up using. Make lemon curd. There's a recipe on my YouTube page for that. And you could use it for different baking needs. You could use it on your toast, on top of your cream cheese and toast um, bagel. You could use it as a filling inside a cake or cookies. Plenty of things you could do with it. So don't waste products, okay? I also wanna show you a beautiful apron that I just got from Calabria, which pray for them because they are under like a lot of fire, a lot of uh, things. So this is my Comari brought back from Italy from me. She knows that I love to bake. She, you know, she gives me the eggs and she also brought me all these goodies for baking. I got all kinds of uh, blossom waters here, orange, lemon, almond, um, all kinds of goodies. Levito, uh, which is the, like the uh, baking powder. Whole bunch of things here, so I'm excited. So I have them on here to see what I might wind up using. So in the spring form pan, we are gonna spray the bottom of the pan and the sides. I'm gonna do one with you guys, or maybe both. 
I'm doing a double batch here because I do want to give this to someone else as well. Parchment paper cut out to fit the bottom. This, the spraying will hold the parchment paper in place too. That's what I like about this, okay? And then we're gonna pour this in, enough of it. I'm doing, like I said, I'm doing a double batch, so I'm not pulling out the ingredients portions. Just telling you what I'm using here. And I like to use something small, round, like a bottom of a cup or even one of these to press this into the pan, okay? And this is what I'm doing, just pressing it into the pan. I'm gonna let it go up the sides a little bit. Just works out good. If you need to use your hands, you know, you could do that as well. But I like to use the bottom of this. I just feel like I get more of an even press. You could use chocolate cookies with this recipe. Be creative. I, I always try to think outside the box. You know that. Um, I think a lot of my recipes and ideas are not out there. And if they are, then there's some other creative mind like mine. But so let me show you here. This is the bottom. Now I'm gonna show you a trick on how to, if you have parchment paper, yet you do not have um, the pre-cut circles. So you're gonna take a piece of parchment paper, do it in half. You're gonna do like you're doing an airplane right down the middle, All right? Like this. And you're gonna fold it in half again. And then you're just gonna do like a cone. You're gonna like keep that point, fold it. Like so. You're gonna take your spring form pan or any pan, turn it upside down. You're gonna point the point of this paper into the middle of the pan. And because this has a lip and this sits in the inside, we're gonna actually cut in the inside of that. So we're gonna cut the tail of this off. Make sure I hold it in the middle there. And I'm gonna cut right along the tail. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just cut a little piece and then pick it up and cut the rest. When you open this back up, you have a circle. Now, it's not always perfect, I'm gonna tell you. Sometimes I mess up. But, I think that's pretty darn good if I say so myself. So, again, I'm gonna spray around the bottom and the sides. I have a lot of cleaning to do after this. All right, we're gonna pour, put the parchment paper at the bottom, press, and you can see how nice and I think that's pretty even. Came out perfect. So that's a trick you can learn, okay? Try to teach you everything that I know. I'm just gonna mix the, the rest of this crumbs a little bit better here. Make sure they're all incorporated with the butter and the hazelnut. And I just put a little bit of the hazelnut. You see how much I put, maybe like a half a cup quarter cup it would be if you were using, making one, I'm making double batch like I said, so. the bottom of this if you feel like you have too little too much remove some this was actually like 12 ounces for the two nine inch pans and when you put these bottoms on you know the layer of the the crumb on the bottom 
it raises. So you, sometimes it looks like your, your cheesecake is at the rim, but don't worry, because when it cooks and then it cools down, that's gonna, the cheesecake, when it rests, it starts to come back down a little bit, okay? And again, these go in the bain marie in the oven. That means surrounded halfway up with hot water. And to these pans, we're also gonna put aluminum foil around them. But I'm not gonna do that with you now because I'm trying to get done with the video and show you how to bake these. So I will do that afterwards when I go to pour them in. So I am gonna put these in the refrigerator, let them start getting cold. You can put them in the oven for, you know, 10 minutes if you want to, but I don't see the need for it. I just put them right in the refrigerator. This is a different type of cheesecake other than the, the uh, Italian ricotta. All right, so I have my egg whites here. They're going in, they're room temperature. Okay. We're gonna mix this first. We're gonna put in a pinch of tartar sauce. So I'm gonna use for a pinch, I'm gonna say, Maybe a quarter teaspoon. Remember, make a double batch, so don't look and say, oh, well, she used a little bit more in her ingredients. Yeah, because I'm using double batch. Let's just listen to the stuff that I'm using. And to this, we're also gonna add a pinch of salt. And remember, I'm doing double batch, so my pinch of salt is going to be a little bit different than your pinch of salt. In it goes. And then we want to get this to be like soft um, peaks. At first, then we're going to incorporate the, um, the sugar into half some of the sugar into here. And there is my. a minute because I had seen that some of the powder stuck on the sides of the bowl so I just wanted to scrape that down. Okay. I already scalded my heavy cream and I melted some of my chocolate that we're gonna drizzle over the, the cake into the cake mixture to get it that marble effect okay So I'm just gonna mix this from time to time because I did it ahead of time. Um, soft peaks. Let's take a look. And yeah, it's soft peaks. Okay, so I'm going to let just a few seconds more and then I'm going to start to incorporate the sugar. Let me just turn this a little bit so you get a better view. Okay. So I'm going to put some of the sugar in. We're gonna let that form into some um, stiff peaks. And then we're gonna do our cream cheese, eggs, sour cream, our cornstarch, our espresso that I have here, as well as our frangelico. And we're gonna place our delicious chocolate into the cake as well, okay? 
So I'm going to turn this up a notch. Love these stand mix. If you don't have one and you can afford one, get one. They're the best things ever. Let me take a look. And it still needs to be whipped. It is very hot out. So I also want to tell you too, sometimes I get people ask me, you know, how do you do this? How do you do that? Why do you have the recipe? Um, they'll ask me questions on Facebook or on YouTube. I tell them, watch the video, because a lot of times you'll learn something from the video that you don't know, you know, um, by reading something. Sometimes it's easier if you watch something. So I'm gonna pour the egg whites into this bowl. And I think now the red one, let's see. Oh yeah. Stiff peaks, okay? So now I'm gonna pour this into that bowl. Pardon me a second here. Just trying to get everything out because I'm gonna use this same bowl to do the egg yolks, sugar, the cream cheese, that I like the ricotta cheesecake best, but this New York style um, cheesecake recipe that I came up with is one of my favorites. I usually make it plain, but like I said, I like to be different from everybody else. I don't want to have the same things. I think that we should try to be a little creative, use our minds, what could we come up with? And so I share those things with you. Okay, so now, this back on. I'm going to raise my hands. I'm going to show you those eggs again, what they look like. Okay. So this is what the eggs look like. You can see they're very fluffy. They hold their peak. And like I said, it's very hot in here, but you can um, feel the heat. So I try to move as quickly as I can. Okay. So we're going to put this back on. And we are gonna do our um, egg yolks and the sugar until they become like lemony and plate and, and look. So in goes their room temperature. You just get a spoon to get the rest of this out because they've been sitting at room temperature and they dishes to wash after this. I usually do it in between. Once I'm done, everything's in the oven, I stop heating up. So. Okay. All right, so we're gonna beat this and the sugar to the pale in color. Let's get that going. I'm gonna open up my frangelica here too. Frangelico, but I said frangelico. This has such a beautiful nutty flavor. So I showed you the half a cup, of cup half demi tasse cup of espresso. Now we're gonna add the liqueur, okay? Oh, it's like Kevin. I'm gonna have a little bit when you guys are taking a break with me and I'm putting stuff in the oven, I'm gonna have a shot of that with my coffee. I'm gonna scrape the side of the bowl on this because it's um, 
the sugar is stuck to the sides when it whips. So I'm just gonna push that down. my other stuff here. Okay. Let's see where we're at. Because we want them yellowish like a lemon and we want it to fall like a ribbon. So let's see where we're at. So the yellow in color look like a lemon and it falls into ribbons, okay? While I have this like this, I'm gonna scrape the bowl one more time. It's just easier now that it's out. What this is really doing is really creaming the egg yolks and getting that sugar to solidify into the eggs, and it makes the eggs nice and airy. But I am, even though this is like this, I am gonna let it be just a few more seconds. here that I scalded half I used, I used for the chocolate to do you know to mix in to melt it and to put it into the actual cake so So I'm gonna whip it first with the paddle. All right, so in goes our cream cheese. And I put this in a bowl just to, you know, not to stay in that aluminum foil that it comes in. You wanna use um, regular Philadelphia cream cheese or cream cheese of your liking, um, but that's a brick style. You could put this in a full processor to get it even smoother if you wanted to. I recently had people tell me they enjoyed the Vicolta video. If you haven't watched it yet, you should. Very easy to make. Okay. This in the sink. Get some water run it in it so it doesn't stick on me. Just putting the rest of that cream cheese in. Of course, I'm rinsing my hands constantly. We're gonna put in the sour cream as well. Just pouring off that little bit of excess water that it usually has. Okay. Sour cream is going in. I wish I had a bigger kitchen and mixing machine. That's one thing I wish I had. I would work that thing like there's no tomorrow. That's for sure. Put it to good use. Some people have these machines and they don't bake. If you have a friend that doesn't have one, ask if you could have it. If they don't use it. Then you keep it running for them. All right, so get rid of this. Again, that's in my hands because I can't keep my hands clean enough. I just am very picky about that. Okay. So now we're gonna put 
the other attachment on and stop whipping this a little bit. I always find that even though you leave this at room temperature, it's always um, harder to get it to get whipped and smooth. So we're going to start off. Sort of medium here, and then we'll scrape down the ball. But I want to just get it going. Once I get this going a little bit, then I'll switch back to the other attachment. I just want to get this going a little bit. I'm going to scrape it. I'll tell you what, when I was growing up, I had to stay in the kitchen with my mother to learn this stuff. But nowadays, there's YouTube videos, there's all kinds of stuff for people to learn things. And it's great. I remember when I started baking back in the day, we didn't have a kitchen aid. We had this the little hand mixer. And sometimes it would get so frustrating working with that. Because back then they didn't have the, the real strong ones, the I'm probably telling them my age, huh? Um, they didn't have the real strong wattage on the stand on the hand mixes. Soaked up, by the way. Okay, I'm gonna start putting in the heavy cream that was scalded for the chocolate, but this is the rest of it. If you wanted to make it an all cheesecake, then you would use that chocolate mixture with the full amount of the heavy cream. Okay. You got I'm gonna scrape this down because it is getting on the sides here and I'm making a double batch so this mixer becomes full quick. This stuff starts to whip. Okay. Continue whipping this. Okay. And I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna switch to the other, back to the other one. And yes, I'm using my clean hands to take this off because I find it's the fastest way. And I'm not loud gagging with the um, spatula. Okay. Almost done here, guys. decorate this really nice so I think at least I'm excited about doing it hopefully you guys will like it too and back with the whipping tool When you 
guys, if you guys try these recipes, post your pictures online. I'd like to see what you came up with. We decorate it differently. I like to see everybody's ideas, creativity. It's fun. Okay. I did forget one item. Give me one second. Never forget your lemon zest, because that does give flavor to the cakes. Just a little bit of citrus zest it goes a long way. I'm just gonna put a little bit in here. And since this is a double batch, I'll probably put the whole thing in. And you just want the zest, okay? You don't want the white part of the lemon, so just be careful. And I'm also putting the espresso in it because I think the espresso elevates the chocolate and the hazelnut. So that's why I'm putting that in there. I think it'll be a nice addition. Okay, so that's in there. Up she goes. Let's put our shot of espresso and frangelico in there. Remember, it's half and half. I gotta make buttercream after this, Italian buttercream. You can see the, the link to the video on my page. Um, I'll try to include it on the this recipe. And I think from now on, I am gonna be putting my recipe at the bottom of the description. You just hit the little arrow button and it'll pop up the description of the cake. And it'll also have the, um, the whatchamacallit, the ingredients and process. I'm gonna put in the cornstarch. And we're gonna let this look nicely. I'm not in a rush. When it comes to cheesecakes, I like them to be incorporated well, so. In a minute here, I'm gonna scrape down the bowls again. I do have a cover for this machine, just so you guys know, that will prevent splatters coming, attacking me. But for some reason, I always wanted it and I don't use it now. I have it and I don't use it. Maybe I just think it's an extra thing to clean. I don't know. Or I forget to bring it out and so I don't use it. And then when I remember, it's like, oh, well, it's a little late now. Okay. So my daughter wants me to make a three-layer, layer, a three-tier cake for her birthday party. So when, for her 15th birthday, my um, family is multicultural. So my husband's from South America, from Peru. And so we celebrate Italian and Peruvian holidays and cultures and so for her 15th, and she probably want one for her 16th as well, um, wants a three-tier cake. So I've been thinking, I have months to, to plan and think. So that's been the top of my head. And then when the little one said that, the older one, of course, chimed in and says, I want that too. So now you know where I'll be at when those birthdays come, thinking about what I'm gonna make. All right, I think this is blended pretty well. Give it another second. I'm just gonna stir my chocolate here.
So I melted some of the chocolate with the heavy cream. And I think I'm gonna put this into one big bowl and incorporate both of them together because one's more melted than the other. So bear with me a second here. these two bowls into one big one and just make it easier for me. Like I said, if you put this whole thing in there, you'd be making a chocolate cheesecake. I want to make it like marble, like pieces of chocolate cheesecake and vanilla cheesecake and just all that goodness. Okay. Perfect, we'll put these in the sink. So I'm gonna answer a couple questions for you because I know a lot of times people ask me, are you a professional baker, are you a pastry chef? And no, I'm actually I'm not. Um, I learned them from my mom, I learned on my own. Um, I don't think always that you need a title to be doing something good. But, um, yeah, I'm not a professional in title as having a doctor, but I like to think I'm somewhat professional. Okay, so we're gonna turn this off. I think I'll do one more scrape, and then we're gonna fold in the egg whites. People asking me all the time, do you sell your cakes? Could you ship it to me? I'd like to get into that. However, I need to find out more information about how to go about mailing them where they're not gonna get damaged. And then have people say, hey, you know, my cake came damaged and you gotta deal with that. And that's not what I'm about, so. Alright guys, I think that's everything. Let's fold in these egg whites into this bowl. I'm going to pour this in here because this is way full. And I'm sure I made a mess there. just to help me in the kitchen cleaning up. <laughs> All right, so we got the egg whites here. We're gonna put in a little bit at a time and fold this, give it a fold. As you can see, I'm folding it from top to bottom, top, or bottom to top, however you wanna say it. I know there's probably people saying, no, it's bottom to top, not top to bottom, but you get the, what I'm saying to you, okay? Pulling some more of it. And then we get the fun stuff. Whoops. Don't want to spillage. Those noises of my mother in the background. She's drinking a water bottle and she likes to play with the, the bottle. She squeezes the bottle. <laughs> Okay, so we got most of this incorporated here, folding it in. I'm gonna put the rest of it. And this is gonna bake 
about an hour and a half in the oven. And like I always tell you with cheesecakes, do not open the oven when it's done. You're just gonna crack it, crack the oven open a little bit, put maybe a rag to hold the door open, like a, a half inch, an inch, something just to pry it open just a little bit for it to gently cool down. Then when it sits cool down, you're gonna take it out of there. After about an hour, I would say, give it an hour. After an hour, even an hour and a half, it wouldn't hurt it. You're gonna take it out, put it on your counter, let it continue to cool off. When you feel that, that cake is no longer hot, you're gonna put it in your, in your refrigerator. This really does need to, be, to set overnight, so this is something you wanna do a day before if you want something, let's say for Friday, do it on Thursday, okay? You don't think that this is gonna be done like a different, you know, regular cake. Cheesecake has to set. <coughs> All right, guys, so we're just folding this in. Okay. Take your time with folding. Make sure it's nice and incorporated, okay? See how nice and fluffy this is? Okay? That's what you want. Scrape the sides of your bowl. Scrape the bottom a little bit. Give it a little mix there. Okay, let me go get those spring form pans out of the refrigerator. I think they've been in there long enough since we've been putting this all together. I'm gonna move this back, move this away from here. Since I'm making two, I'm going to eyeball this and try to put this into two pans here. I'm going to stop right there. Pour some in this one. If I was probably doing three of these, I'd probably measure it out. Use a bowl, level it, and say, okay, this is about as much as the other one. Remember, we still gotta put that other chocolate in here too, so. Remember what I told you, these wind up settling too as they cool off, they do go back down. So you might see it get really puffy in your oven. It'll rise nicely, but it'll also come back down. Okay, let me see where I'm at. I'm just smoothing this out here. And I'll show it to you in a second. I just want to see where I'm at. I still have batter in here. It needs to go in this one, I believe. I'm really excited about this cake. I'm hoping that it's a hit, that people enjoy it, people will follow me, that you'll um, be supportive and really fall in love with these recipes that you want to share with other people. That'll keep Italian traditions, cultures, although this is an American dish. Um, I like to think the components sort of make it Italian with all of the pour, the frangelico, the espresso. It is an Italian twist on the New York style cheesecake. All right, guys, so 
Again, so I'm just gonna smooth this out a little bit. Okay. And we're gonna give a little tap too. And then I'm gonna wrap the outside of these in aluminum foil, which I should have probably did it first. I think I'll be okay. Okay, so we got that done there. Now, the fun part. Well, I like to think of it as the fun part. I'm actually gonna put the Forever Shea candies in. I should have probably unwrapped them. And you could do this either way you want. You could put the chocolate in first, or you could do your swirl first. I think I'm gonna do the swirl first and then pop these in. Oh boy. There we go. I thought I was not gonna get the edge of that. Let's go ahead, oops, let's go ahead and get the chocolate and swirl that in. Just gonna use, give a little tap. I had a little piece of uh, graham cracker. Okay. Just gonna take this and drizzle it in. And you could drizzle in as much as you want. I um, will probably have left over because I don't know how chocolatey I want this as of right now, so. You don't want to scrape to the bottom. You don't want to disturb the crust on the bottom, the base. I always tend to make a little extra for some reason. I don't think I'm gonna see how I get here. And then I'm gonna take my knife and I'm just gonna swirl it in, fold it on the top a little bit, like this, just to cover it, give it a marble effect, and I'm just gonna swirl. And the knife is going like maybe halfway in, not even. And I'm just running it around. I do um, would love to have my daughter-in-law by my side so we could teach her these things in person. But she's a little bit far away. And I say daughter-in-law, they're not married yet, but they will soon be. I'm excited about that. Okay, and we're gonna mix the other one, do the same. We're gonna sort of fold it. And then stir it like so. Try to get that to go down a little bit into the, you could just like fold and swirl, like scoop and swirl. See how I'm doing this one? Just taking it and scooping it and then spread it around. And you make your own design, you know? Okay, I'm just gonna level this off. Same thing here, just sort of like level it off. Okay, that looks good to me. Okay. All right, now let's put our candy in. I don't think I 
this one as well as I want to, so just bear with me. Be creative, take your time when you're doing these. If you find a mistake, just find a way to correct it, okay? Okay, I think that's good, I think I'm fussing too much. I'm gonna turn my oven on real quick because I forgot to do that, 300 degrees. I still have to put these into, wrapped with aluminum foil. I'm gonna hold this here because I might need it. And now we're gonna take our candy and we're gonna place it into these mixes. So I did leave some of the chocolate out because I didn't want to get too chocolatey. Okay. These are delicious, the hazelnut chocolate. I'm gonna cut it in half because I don't want to overpower it. If you want to use a whole one in one spot, you can. So I suggest you do this, leave them on top so you know where you have them, and then we're gonna press them in, okay? I'll do one with you like this, and then I'm gonna get off here and finish this off, put them in the oven. You also wanna have maybe a few of these on top of the cake, so. Boy, that looks good. Look at that little hazelnut in there. It's a real treat. I think that's enough. We're gonna take the knife and send it into the cake. Send it into the cake. And take your knife and you're just gonna make sure it's closed up. And I'm gonna wrap this with aluminum foil. And they're gonna go into the oven with that baby marina water, halfway hot water going up. I might put one more in the middle here, just across, because I feel like maybe it won't reach everything, so. guys I'll get back with you when these set um, probably before they set because we're gonna make that chocolate plate that goes on top of this cake when we're done if I could find another nine inch pan because I probably should have did it beforehand if not I will figure it out all right guys into the oven they go be back shortly all right guys since the cakes are in the oven we're gonna get, we're gonna get started with the other part of this recipe, which is melting some of that chocolate. So leftover chocolate that I had, I just added a little bit more to it, melted it, and we're gonna put, and I'm gonna do a capful of the Frangelico in it. Okay. Just wanna show you this part real quick and then you guys could do the rest. Oh, you'll see the rest. So we got the chocolate, the frangelico in here melted, right? Stirring it up, it's like a ganache, but I wanna have this set. I wanna try to get it as hard as I can. So it sits on the cake nice. That's why I'm doing it ahead of time so it stays overnight. And hopefully it'll set really, probably set in a little bit in an hour or two, but I wanna leave it overnight to get it nice and as hard as I can. So we're gonna pour in about a half a cup Rice Krispie Treats. See where that takes me. Because the Ferrero Rocher has that crisp to it, I thought this would be a nice enhancement to the top of the cake as a ganache. And I'm gonna put also some chopped up hazelnuts. And I'm gonna add a little bit more. Oops. So I would say a cup. 
sacrifice thing. And it's actually popping with the chocolate. <laughs> like it does in the commercials, as they say, for the, when you put the milk on it and it pops. And well, it pops, even with the chocolate. Okay, I mix this nice. And I got another pan here, and I put a little um, spray oil in the bottom so I can put the parchment in so it holds it in place for me. And I'm gonna pour this in here. And I'm just gonna spread it around because I want a, I want a plate that's gonna sit on top of the cake. And underneath it's gonna be some raspberry preserves. And I'm actually going to sit some raspberry on top of the cake as well. And I don't want this layer to be real thick, guys. So just a nice thin layer, enough that you can handle it and put it on there. If it breaks on you, don't go crazy. You'll just take the pieces and decorate it. Either stick it to the sides of the cake or on top. Form some kind of design. And it'll get, give the same effect, okay? But I'm hoping that this sets nicely. Um, so it sits on top of the cake. Just an added touch. Okay. So that's what it'll look like, okay? This is a thin layer of like a chocolate ganache with Rice Krispie treats to give that crunch. Same effect as the Rocher. I'm also now gonna take some hazelnuts and put it on here, but you don't have to stay on to the video with me. I'm gonna chop them up, throw them on top, press it in with the spoon and let it set, okay? See when the cakes are out, we put this all together. In the meantime, I'm gonna make my Italian whipped buttercream icing, which you can find the link and um, the recipe on my page. So if you wanna use that, you can. If you don't, you want to just put the cheesecake plain, you can do that as well. Thanks. Hi guys, so the cheesecakes are nice and cold. I apologize, I started to film this and I forgot to hit the button. So you didn't miss much. Took the cheesecakes out, I put a ring of the Italian buttercream and I filled it with, I got this from Costco, I believe. I wrote in the recipe, I'm gonna write a, a raspberry preserve because I don't know if everybody could find this, but I'm using a four fruit preserve. It's strawberries, cherries, red currants, and raspberries. And it is delicious, I got it at Costco. All right, so that's going in the middle. And then remember I told you we were doing that disc, that surprise with the Rice Krispie Treat. It's gonna take off that paper underneath. And we're gonna lay this right on top. Press a little bit. I did put the cheesecake in the freezer for a little bit. So now I'm gonna use my offset spatula because this is short here and I'm just gonna do a crumb coat gently because it is really warm here and I wanna get this back in the refrigerator. So I am gonna decorate this with um, some rosettes on top, some raspberries. I am gonna do some decoration on it. So you'll see the finishing touch, but I just wanted to show you this part of it because of the simple fact that, oops, that I wanted you to see how that plate goes on. Then I'll slice the cake and I'll show you the finishing product. I hope you guys are enjoying these recipes. Um, hope you're sharing the pages with your friends. I am going to put probably some Ferrero Rocher candies on top. I'm not certain yet. I just, I sometimes go along with what I think at the moment. But I do want to put this front coat on and let it sit.
You want to fold it gently, but you want to get enough on there to cover the cake. Can't wait to see what you guys think. And like I said, a lot of these recipes you could do ahead of time. You don't have to wait to do the whole thing in one day. Do it in pieces. Oops, I just got a little chocolate there. I'll get that off. When it's really hot, guys, pop your cake in the freezer. Don't try to attempt to um, to decorate it. If it's warm in your kitchen, it just becomes a mess. I, I learned from trial and error. If you have to, put it in the refrigerator, take it back out, or pop it in the freezer for 15 minutes. Just want to get that nice and smooth around. Try to cover everything that you can. I tend to play around with this a little bit more once I'm off video and get it to where I want it to be. But I want to give you guys a gist of how to do it if you don't know how. If you have no bakery experience, baking experience, this will guide you, at least give you the basis, okay? And I'm just smoothing it out, making it nice and smooth. I'm just gonna run my spatula around the bottom of it a little bit, pick up anything that shouldn't be there. I think we're good there. So I do remember we put some hazelnuts on the top of the chocolate while it was setting so that they would sit. Let's say you forgot and you said, oh no, but I really want to put them on. Get a spoon, put it in hot tap water, really, really hot tap water, take it out, touch the top of this, it'll melt it, and then place your hazelnut on or your raspberries because raspberries are gonna go on this. All right, guys, I have another cake to decorate. I'm still not finished with this one, but it's going back in the fridge. I'll be posting pictures. I have the other disc here for the other cake. So, um, again, thank you for taking the time and spending time with me today and learning how to make this New York style Frangelico hazelnut an espresso cheesecake with a raspberry surprise underneath that chocolate disc. If you have issues in cutting the cheesecake on top, let's say your ganache came out too hard, you should always let the cake sit out room temperature before you're gonna serve it. Like, I don't know, if you're gonna have, let's say coffee in 20 minutes, 15 minutes, take the cake out, let it sit for 10, 15 minutes. If you find that the ganache on top is too hard on yours, take a knife, put it in some hot water, wipe off the hot water and then slice the cake. Okay? Um, remember to hit like, share, and invite your friends. Thanks, guys.